Just remember, you guys haven't left yet, so it's not like keeping them back here and find that there are some sharp things that you want. Um, There's a little bit of camping supplies, but not much. There are no tents or anything like that. I'm not worried about that. We're going for a house. I don't know anything about it. I didn't know True. it was swamp. It's been it's been vacant for three years. Yeah. Did you tell them anything about how the timeline about? Yeah, we're Randy, I'm probably during the trip. I would have probably talked okay. about it. Yeah, you guys would have had time to kill. So, Randy Young died three years ago. Blah blah blah. So the house has been vacant for at least that long. Hey, Bailey. Hmm. Not about my top one. That's really good. Okay. Anything nope. anybody wants to buy right now? Nope. Okay. Good. What are you doing? I guess go look for what his name is. Harvard. Arvid Dill. Nice yeah, there's a, you find the, what do you call it, the lovely lady? Lovely lady, we'll talk to her about chartering it. It is a dumpy little boat. It's basically like a, a big rowboat with an outboard motor set on the back. Um, there's a man sitting in it. He is, um, he's got an unlit cigar in his mouth, but he also, you see him spitting. Like he's also got chaw in his cheek. There's a big um, jug next to him. Like, uh, um, what kind of jugs do they use? Um, like, uh, yeah, like a stone kind of stone uh, ceramic jug. It doesn't have X's on the side, but there's a cork in the top. And he's sitting at the end of this rickety, ratty little dock. I'm used to this. In his boat. This, yeah, he's very, he's very, very story. southern. He greets you by belching quite loudly I'm just and then just staring at you very with half open, half slitted eyes. I'm just like very <laughs> You're like what? I'm like scary. <laughs> you say that under your breath. Uh, what? I'd heard from the uh, man over at the store there that you could uh, possibly take me to do Dunwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah, uh, yeah. We're taking these two and that. He points at Virgil when he says that. As well. Yeah, that was what? <laughs> ten dollars. Now, is this ten dollars one way, or is this also getting us back? Why are you going because out there to New Dunwich? Cousin left some land out there for me, and I'm going to go appraise it and decide if I want to keep it or not. All right. That'll take a while, won't it? Praising. Yeah, a few days probably. Well, I'm a busy man. But I'll make you a deal, though you sound weird. Probably referring to his accent. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll take you out $10. I'll take you out any gear you want taken out. We'll pull another boat behind us where we can leave it for you. And then I'll go back and pick you up in a week. Right, Ten dollars is a lot of money for this. Yeah. Okay, just throwing that out there. Okay. Uh, Virgil takes it from me. What? He says he'll get paid once we're on the way. I suppose. And then he very <laughs> carefully hands it back to you. Very gently hands it back to you. Yeah. Delp just kind of glares at that at, at Virgil, and he looks back towards you. Yeah. Is that is that gonna work for you? You can yeah. smell alcohol in this guy's yeah. breath. It stinks. It's really strong, too. Yeah, it'd be, be fine, but we'll uh, pay you once you get us out there. Fair enough. When you want to go. Takes about three hours. It's else? Right now it's morning. You guys probably left pretty early from the hotel. It took you about an hour to drive here. So it's probably about 9 o'clock in the morning right now. <clears throat> an hour. All right, I'll be room. here. And then he just sits in his boat because he's a very busy man. And he spits more tobacco <laughs> while he has a cigar in his mouth. That's some skill right there. <laughs> oh, it's not, yeah, it's, not even lost. It's and he he spits like he's been chowing for years and years and years. Some of it gets in the water even. Yeah. Most of it ends up in the boat. Anyway, so what do you guys want to do? We have an hour before our bit expects you. Anything else? If you're going to be there a week, you might want to take 
supplies. Yeah, I get back and get some food, food, water. You don't know what the water situation is there. Yeah. Uh, you can get plenty of canned food. Yeah. Um, and preserves. They've got preserves there as well if you want to go that route. I love a cigarette. You love a cigarette. They do have cigarettes at the general store. I'll buy a pack. <laughs> no. What? If it's going to be weak, you might want to buy a three or four. Oh, they're not your brand. No. No, they're kind of a weird off brand. You have no idea if they'll be You're going to buy a carton. You probably will want to buy a little carton. That's probably like freaking 50 cents or something for a carton of cigarettes, though. Why not? Okay. Don't worry about marking them up for the principal stuff. Yeah, I was going to say that the booth one you can complete. Food throw a week for everybody in the group would buy about 10 bucks. I want to buy more oil for a minute. Okay. You love that. You have kerosene. Mm -hmm. Huh? There. You can also buy jugs of water there. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, now I would have brought like a toolkit down with me. Like a mechanic after all that I had. So. Yeah, you could have brought your toolkit. Yeah. What now? Wouldn't that be running water at the house? Yeah, we no don't idea. Know. <laughs> you know, there's probably no running water in this town <laughs> except for maybe a pump. Um, it's like I said, it's mostly there's maybe the general store, there's the shack, there's the burned out post office. And most of it's tents that people are living in now, big tents. Which for Florida is not too bad. It's not going to ever get terribly cold here. Yeah, it's a hard enough. Especially in southern Florida, yeah. So, if you guys think of anything else you'd like to take or purchase, um, who's got the lowest luck in the group? I've got 70. I've got 70. 55. I'm not going to count Virgil, he's an NPC. Yeah. 55, make me a luck check. Plus, it's probably. Well. And everybody can make me an idea check. 27, they do have little kerosene stoves, little cook stoves, too. Is it idea check? Idea yes. check for all of us? Well, come on. Sure, uh, I don't know what idea checking for. Yeah, good. You're buying cans of beans and stuff. Okay. You have no idea if they're going to have any way to cook them out there. Sure. You, I mean, you know nothing about where you're going. And it's not like you can check the internet, so. You could eat canned can beans cold. Oh, that, I'll give you that for the idea tech too. You might want to buy a can opener. Or a knife and kind of like at least chunk anyway. it open. Knife thing's hard, so I've seen a friend do it. Is there anything else you guys want to get before you go? Before Yeah, I guess if the place has been like abandoned for like what three years? Three years. Cook what? stoves, ten dollars. Do they have like uh, really? machetes like cut, like or something that cut through like underbrush? Yeah, yeah, they would I probably have that. Like that yeah. Okay. Yeah, machete or something, or some kind like of. Like three dollars for a machete. You get a big machete, yeah. I'm just gonna be responsible for buying this. Um, you can get all kinds of gardening equipment. I don't know, not all kinds, but they would have machetes and stuff. You want what? Buying food. Okay, so you're paying the ten dollars for the food. For like the week worth of food. Yeah, that's cans and mostly preserved stuff. I don't know if you want to get bread or anything, because in, no. it's really humid, so bread stuff is going to go rotten real fast. Small stuff is just going to go. Yeah, but you can get bread. Um, I mean, you can get canned foods, preserves. What else do you want to get? What else can you think of off the top of your head? The water. Oh, yeah. Uh, five gallon, like several five gallon jugs of water. I'm probably just going to grab the stove while I'm at it, because I can. That's another 10. That would yeah. be addition. So that would be a $20 tote. Okay. Right. So she buys a kerosene camp stove. Um, you'll get kerosene with that, and if kerosene will be included in the price of that to use it. Okay, I'm going to carry all this. Virgil's carrying all of it. Virgil's carrying everything. Stuff. You're not really? carrying anything. Yeah. We're just picking up everything. Does he strength. This? Yeah. He's got better than average strength, so yeah. He can at least get it to the boat. He can't like run around with it on his back the entire week, uh -huh. but you know, he can get all that stuff down to the boat. I guess he'll just carry it to the boat. Okay. Yep, that's what he's for. Yep. That's what he does. And I think I'm good here. Is there anything else that you guys want to get that you can think of? I'm just going to walk to the boat with Virgil and wait. Well, it'd probably take an hour to get all this stuff together and get down there. Well, I could sit so. there and make some awkward conversation with this other man. Um, Harvard. Harvard. Oh, man, it's yeah. awful. He often sips from his jug. Um, the stink of, of, of hard liquor you can smell. Yeah, I was missing Winchester. Probably. probably used to that too. I don't think Daddy drinks it though. No, no, Daddy drinks. Daddy's rich. Daddy, yeah, Daddy, Daddy drinks. drinks. Daddy drinks bourbon from yeah. Kentucky. Imported. <laughs> Sometimes Canadian whiskey. So yeah, Daddy's got Daddy's got a nice liquor cabinet. He will. He does have some Winchester. 
he knows he's you got relatives that make the stuff. So you've got some in the house, but it's not daddy's problem. He's got that. <laughs> uh, a lot of servants get that sometimes. Just smoking. Okay. <laughs> Yep, uh, it's terrible trying to talk to this guy. He's just awful. Um, and I make a short conversation and just look my own yep. way. He, he's, so you married? Why you ask? <laughs> well, I ain't married. <laughs> Spits most of it gets in the water. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, you can always come back here while your friends go. Blah, blah, blah. It kind of goes that direction. Like, I want to have sex with you. It's kind of where it goes to. <laughs> Uh, does it, it's not, not really implicit about, about it. Right no, here. Right. It's not implicit like, hey, kick your clothes off. But it's it's implied pretty. He's all like eager. Pretty bluntly implied yeah, as far yeah. as like he's not subtle. I'm just like. Ugh. All right, you guys get down there with the rest of the stuff, whatever you want. To, um, got like a gallon of lamp oil if you want, or kerosene. Um, so that will that will help. Um, and. Um, he gets out of the boat. Seems like he takes his time. He ties off another smaller boat. Uh, three of you can fit in his boat with him. No, two of you can fit in his boat with him. Well, I'm already in there. Two others will have to. Yeah, you're already sitting in there. <laughs> so, yeah, Virgil's probably in there, too. I didn't think about it. Which one looks drier? They both look wet. They're both damp. There's like a little water slosh around the bottom of both of them. And you will water get into the smaller boat? Uh, it doesn't look like it's sinking, if that's what you mean. It no, like, I mean... There's you could put your camera stuff on your lap and it should stay dry. Okay. Um, there's seats in it. It's not like you're sitting in the bottom of yeah. the boat. It's, it's, yeah. And I'm just going to say, if I thought there was water, I'd probably take off my shoes before I got in. Okay. So I'm like it's like right scummy now. brown water. Yeah, I'm just like. And his, you see little spots where, like, where he's missed the side of the boat, where his little juice, his tobacco juice is just floating in there. I'm going to prop my feet up on the side. <laughs> okay. Somewhere. All right. <laughs> well, um, uh, Virgil actually invested in the, the tall boots, and so he's wearing them. Uh, he's got, and he's got your suitcase too. You guys have suitcases as well with your other stuff. So everything, it's, it's kind of a tight fit in these two boats. And he starts this little motor that just is like, put, 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 put. it's like a little putt, putt, putter. Um, uh, he casts off and you guys, uh, you guys head out. Uh, uh, he belches, he farts, uh, he leers uh, at, at the women. And he's always like winking at you and winking at you. Um, he starts talking. Uh, every once in a while, he lifts up that, that jug and he takes a swig and he puts it back down and seals it back up. Uh, he keeps up this endless monologue about his life in the Everglades, how he's been sorely wronged by those he feels are out to get me. Know what I mean? Your boat's only like four or five feet behind him, so and he's in the back of the one boat, so sometimes he leans over and he'll just talk to you guys like you're in the boat with him. Um, I'm just looking away. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's, he talks to him constantly just about himself and about how he's been Three wronged. Hours. Three hours of this, yes. Three terrible hours of this. Um, doesn't say anything about Newton Dunwich or anything like that, but apparently he knows the way there. And it's a long, winding, meandering path that he has to go around areas that um, where the land, there's little pockets of land. He has to go around cypress trees. Um, the way you guys get to see you guys get to be swarmed by mosquitoes and other bugs constantly. Um, the roots of the ancient cypress trees writhe ominously out of the still tea-colored water. Um, amidst these roots, swim a number of poisonous snakes. You also spot alligators, crocodiles. Um, hot, it's hot, extremely humid. Um, yeah, uh, most of it's underwater but he apparently is choosing a path where he can make it with his little outboard board. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of animals that you see. There's tons of insects. Uh, dragonflies buzz around your boat. Mosquitoes are just harassing you. Um, there's, uh, you see serpents in the overhanging branches or swimming through the water. Um, you spot alligators slipping from the mossy shore, their shadows moving through the murky waters beneath the boats you're traveling in. The air is thick, heavy with moisture, pungent odor of rot and stagnancy. Um, temperatures in the 90s, you're very hot. Um, you're especially, because you're wearing layers, aren't you? Yeah. Um, I've heard of my spirits. I don't think it's thick or anything. It's probably not, because you're from the south, but it's still several layers. So you're hot, you're sweating, 
Uh, by the time you reach New Dunwich, three hours later, a little afternoon, you all feel just kind of miserable. Put, 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 put. And he, he pulls up um, his boat to what appears to be like a boathouse. Uh, there's a boathouse and a dock uh, right next to each other. Uh, and he, uh, you can see a few buildings beyond. They look like they're in pretty bad disrepair. Uh, and he pulls up to the dock and he ties off and then he's like, just looks at you guys. Doesn't make any attempt to help you get your stuff out of the out of the boats. Me and Bird just pick up and leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that. Okay, you guys all unload. He reaches back and unties the other boat, and he unceremoniously to tosses the line to, of it to you. Okay. All four of you could fit in this boat, but it would be really. There's a couple oars in the bottom of that boat too, by the way. He just throws that to you, and he kind of points at the boathouse. He's like, "All right, I'll be back in a week." He's really drunk by now because he's been drinking the whole trip. Drinking and driving on a boat's fun, though. <laughs> it's not like enough. No. But still, he's been doing it. Um, it's really not. No drinking now, boy. With the slurred promise to return in one week, Arvid Delp and his boat chugs off into the mist laden waterways of the Everglades. Can I take one? No, he tells me the rope for the other boat. One boat. You're left with one boat. Yeah. It says boats here. I don't want it. Chugs off into the mist laden waters of the Everest, leaving you standing on a rickety, teetering dock whose planks are so softened by rot they hardly seem capable of supporting your weight. As the last of Arvid's boat vanishes around the curve of the channel, you turn at last to take your first good look at New Dunwich. The town is a sad collection of rundown shambles, rotting remains which seem more in keeping with their surroundings now than they ever could be when, they, when newly erected. Age and neglect can be read in every sagging roof, every unpainted plank, every broken window. New Dunwich's way laid out in a circular pattern. The crumbling domiciles of a dozen or so families arranged around what must have been the town hall, which looms like a wounded giant at the hub of the town. The streets, probably no more than clear paths in the dirt, are now overgrown and eradicated by the lush growth of the marshes. Here and there, trees have taken root and thrived, adding to the out-of-place impression that the entire colony exudes like some thick vapor not meant to be breathed. A nearly capsized boathouse stretches over the waterway near the dock, but it will suffice you to but it will suffice to contain your one remaining boat, if you so desire. Uh, this is as much as you can see from the dock, and it is surely enough to make you question the wisdom of the entire expedition. Welcome to New Dunwich. Click, you take a picture. <laughs> Just a break, I'd still this house how are you. Take the worst right out of my mouth. <laughs> Here you go, if you want to take a look at what kind of you can see. I don't know why your cousin thought it'd be a good Thank idea you. to make a house out here. And there's kind of a little, um, oh, that should be on there, god damn it. Ignore that. I didn't see it. Yeah, you'll see it soon enough. You'll find out soon enough, because it's not a big deal, but, um. This is, this is hell because there's no newspaper. <laughs> if there's a newspaper in this town, you'd be, town is, a, is losing the term loosely. You guys are put off here at this rickety dock. There's the boathouse. Uh, what do you want to do? You, okay. you, you don't see any house. people. Yeah, there's nobody here that you can see. Um, How do these people get oh, everybody can make me a listen here. and an idea check. You need to tell me if you make both. Okay. Uh, let's see That's about Virgil. Virgil's, Virgil's listen is kind of suck. Both. Nope. He didn't make. You did make both. Okay. Can Only Miss Fairfield made both. No. Um, as you're walking towards Town Hall, led by Nigel, are you carrying all your junk? You're gonna leave it for now on the dock. I guess I'm next. carrying my camera. Do you want to leave Virgil with it or something? Because you can always do that. I mean, that's kind of what he's for, is to kind of do the shit that, so you guys can stay together as a group. Yeah, I guess just leave it. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I'm fine. Alright, Virgil will stay at the dock with the gear for now. You're still to be able to see him, right? Cause oh, he's yeah. staying. He's going to stay right here at the dock, just with all the right. food and the equipment and most of your camera equipment, probably. Right. Well, you can see him until yeah. you get about here. And you know he's armed, so. Yeah. He's fine. As you're walking through town and you spot the town hall, so am I. Um, you kind of you become aware of an eerie, unnatural silence. You don't even hear insects around here. Good. Where? Good, but not good. Other than the rampant growth of vegetation, New Dunwich appears devoid of life. A stagnant, rotting stench hangs in the air, pungent and powerful. 
similar to the rest of the march, but much more intense. Um, you see several buildings. They're all kind of built in a big circle. Like this. Yeah, exactly. The picture is semi-accurate. Um, Do you know which house it is? He does not. Nope. Um, go. You go to the town hall, which appears to be falling down. The huge wooden building stands shakily at the center of New Dunwich. The exterior is badly weathered. Moss and fun fungi, 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 thriving on the warped, cracked planks which comprise the structure. All the windows are broken, or at the very least cracked, and the place has the look of a haunting desolation. A large tarnished bell can be seen hanging left in the building steeple. Um, what are you doing? That's what you see from outside. As you approach this building, the largest building in the center of town, you don't see a sign of a markings on any other. They all, all these just appear to be houses. Nothing says general store. It looks like one or anything like that. I know the cigarette. This place is creepy. Yeah. Okay. Remember, you have <laughs> the filter, right? Is there like? Do you rid the filter? Okay, so you're smoking them straight up. What yeah, now? Like is there like a door on this thing, or is it falling off? Or There's a door. There's a door. Um, you don't know if it'll fall off. I guess I'm just gonna go and kind of knock on it a bit. Okay. <laughs> There's no answer. Uh, you knock too. I'm rude. <laughs> no answer. There's no answer. You push it open, it scrapes along the floor. Um, you see that the interior appears to have been divided into several small rooms. Um, after looking around for uh, a couple minutes, um, you find that one appears to have been a meeting room, another looks like it was a general store. Uh, there's a school room, town storage, and a jail. But this is what you see at first glance. What of these do you want to kind of look at? And you can look at them all over time if you want. Where do you want to go first? You don't see any people in here. Is there any place with news? <laughs> uh, there looks like a room with like shelves, like a general store. There might be newspapers or something there. If you want to go. Are you wandering in that room? I'm going to go check out the meeting room, I guess. Meeting room? Sure. I'm just kind of following along. Who are you following? They've gone to two separate rooms. Okay, so you're following Nigel. Um, the meeting room is empty. There are 30 wooden chairs. Many are broken and a crumbling podium. Empty oil uh, uh, lamps hang on the walls. Oh, fuck you, fly. Uh, the general store is lined with shelves, most of which are filled with dust and crusted cans, bottles, and assorted supplies. Um, you don't see any newspapers or any paper whatsoever, and there's nobody in here. Uh, light is coming in from windows, uh, so it's not like really, really dark. It's just a little dimmer than outside. And it is, I'm going to say it's a bright, sunshiny day today. You're also with him in the meeting hall. Um, so nothing of interest in either of these rooms, apparently. What were some of the other rooms? The uh, it looked like there was like a jail towards the back of the building, town, some kind of like a storage room maybe, and a school room. From what you could just make, you kind of walked in, and there's like a foyer area, and there were several doors, and you kind of peeked in all these doors before you picked where you were going to go, awesome. and made a guess on what each one was. I want to check the school room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that too. I'll head for the storage room. So you're crossing the school room, that's when you pick up with Miss Fairfield, and then Nigel heads over to the storage, what looks like a storage room. Um, the school room is much the same state as the meeting room. Empty, except for the desks and chairs of long forgotten students. As with the rest of the place, all, it's layered, all is layered with dust and grime and, and dry oil lamps hanging from every wall. Uh, the storage room looks like it might have once been filled with stuff. Now there's just junk in there. Broken boxes, um, empty crates. Um, looks like bags that might have had grain in them at one point. Now it's just like something rotting on the ground underneath them. Like, you know how if you leave like a bunch of grain, it'll just turn like mush. It's like that. There's a kind of a musky smell. Eh, not musky. Like a rotten vegetable smell. Not a terrible one, but it's like, uh, ew. Well, I see why everybody was confused while we were heading this way. It almost like anybody's here. There's also a jail cell apparently in the back of the building. Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, Dead people. Woo. Great. There is a uh, once very sturdy bar cell. And unlike the others, it, it shows sign of upkeep. There's a little dust. The cell door has been kept in a near perfect condition, and there are two full oil lamps hanging on either side of the door. Lit or not? Not lit. Okay. And it looks like the walls are reinforced in this area of the place, too. Shut up. I thought this straight there. You no. can be. I mean, yeah. it's pretty yeah. close. Yeah. I just walked over there. You can follow me. Kind of like slower, nobody here, okay, going down here. Yeah, that is 
branch. That appears to be the entirety of the town hall. There doesn't appear to be any way up to like the bell, and you don't see a rope or anything hanging down um, from like the bell. Yeah, there's not there's not a rope or anything hanging down from from like a hole that leads up to the bell tower. Apparently, it doesn't appear to be way up there either. Dun dun dun. Just one, just one cell. So there's no like records? And there's no like bed or anything in it, it's just an empty cell. What there's now? no like records or anything? Doesn't look like it. They might have once been kept in the storage room, but you didn't see anything in there that would like resemble them. You can go in there and look if you want. Looks like it was used to store food and items and stuff, but not actual like paper products and anything. This is the town hall in like the loosest sense of the term, apparently. Could be. What do you guys want to do? The town hall looks pretty empty. Yeah, it does. Hello? What? Somebody's calling from outside. I go upstairs, I guess. Am I upstairs or is it? No, there's no upstairs. Board. Sorry, I thought you yeah, said yeah. upstairs. There, there, there's no way to get up to the bell or anything like Where's that. Where's the voice yeah. coming from? Out front. Out front? Yeah. I guess just kind of yeah. slowly head that way. Okay. Uh, there's a man standing out there. He is, um, let's see. Is there yeah, actually? Uh, he's not actually facing the town hall. He's just kind of calling. Hello? He, it, it's very quiet here. Sure. There's no way he would not have heard from but, probably yeah, anywhere in the village the putt putt of, the, of um, yeah. Arvid's freaking um, outward motor. It wasn't terribly loud, but it was striking. Uh, there's a man out there. He's wearing like gardening gloves. Uh, overalls, like a plaid shirt. He's got like a straw hat. Like it looks like he's gardening, but gardening somewhere. Um, the hell is this guy? There's his house. Oh, here he is. Okay. Um, he's a tall, gaunt man. Um, uh, uh, let's see if he even notices you guys come out because he's not really facing the right direction. Um, so you come out of the town hall. Uh, he appears to be like looking around, like he's trying to figure out if somebody's here or not. Does he have any stats? Well, I'm gonna yeah, approach him if nobody else um, Does he have a spot hidden? He does. Oh, he made it. Uh, he turns around as you guys as you guys are coming to the front door of the town hall. He's like, uh, he looks like he's maybe 40, late 40s, early 50s. Um, he goes, uh, hello, hello. Uh, his, his accent is distinctly New England, um, kind of a, a ruralish New England accent. Um, kind of uh, hello, uh, good, good, good afternoon. Pepper Farm, I remember uh, <laughs> That's like a way that I can kind of get into a New England accent. He's like, uh, go, oh, hello, uh, who, who are you folks? He's walking over towards you. Uh, towards you as he says this. Uh, I walk up to him and like off my hand. Oh, yes. He, he takes your hand, he shakes it. Uh, 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 Crawford uh, Slater. On the Nigel Bricka. Had a Imagine that guy with a straw. I could not find an old man with a straw hat. This neon. Because I wanted to find a picture of a guy that looked like <laughs> when he first met this guy. 